come along because I heard the Kia investment uh, seminar was on and I'm interested in what people's attitudes are to investing in New Zealand. We've come to find out about opportunities because it's been very tough when you're disconnected from a market like New, Ze New Zealand for as long as we have been. Um, you know, we want to now at, at my age at 40 to sort of go, okay, well, what can we give back? I'm going to briefly, very briefly, take you through the report, but at the end of the evening, please, when you leave, on the table there, there are several copies of these. Please do take one for yourself and study it. Over the last few years, the amount of investment going into New Zealand has absolutely uh, dropped off the scale. We all felt it was important to do some research and to try to figure out how we can help generate and grow investment into New Zealand. A lot of it seems really obvious, but until somebody actually does the work, and puts it in a paper like that, um, it's just not accessible. So, you know, it's the sort of thing that you can use the stats out of it to, to promote new investment in New Zealand. The biggest uh, challenge to attracting investment to New Zealand businesses are the level of commercial skill and the perceived low ambition culture of New Zealand entrepreneurs. That came through quite a lot in the research. The New Zealand businesses surveyed did not have the same perception of their own innovation, innovative nature. It turns out there's a bit of a disjunct between what New Zealand businesses think and what we think. The expats have a much higher view of the innovative of New Zealand entrepreneurship. I really reinforce the point about, uh, about New Zealand companies being so innovative and entrepreneurial. Uh, it never, I was just down there um, last month and it, it hits you again and again how incredibly interesting and attractive the product opportunities are. The business uh, now, the business capabilities, the sophistication of business, the access to, to global markets uh, is not there, and that is again uh, some of the, the types of skills and capabilities that you can uh, that you can bring to bear. I think that the investment opportunities are interesting, attractive, well priced, highly prospective, and that offshore expatriate Kiwis through Kia, in particular, if we can just get them excited and the, and the opportunities, I think that will make a big difference. I've been an investor in New Zealand for, for many years and uh, have been a participant in the New Zealand uh, Trade and Enterprise Beachhead Programme through my role uh, as chair in, the, in North America. I don't believe that there's any reason why you wouldn't be able to find very, very attractive investment opportunities in New Zealand. It seems to be food and beverage and farming um, is the main um, uh, areas that people overseas are interested in. 70% of the economy is in food and beverage. There are enormous opportunities in food and beverage and we're going to hear more about um, uh, agriculture uh, which is clearly a huge opportunity for all sorts of, of um, innovative investment vehicles. As global population increases and demand for protein continues to increase and New Zealand is a very efficient producer of protein, so the dairy industry and a lot of related farming industries in New Zealand have got a great future. Not only is agricultural commodities the new oil, but New Zealand is the Saudi Arabia of milk protein. <laughs> this is consumption of, of proteins in China, red meat and milk proteins. This stuff here takes 10 more hectares to produce than um, rice, cereals, dry roots and chip. You wouldn't want to be a dry roots and, and, and tuba producer in China, that's, that's not a growth industry. Um, this stuff is, and this requires more hectares, so we've got amazing demand pressure coming into agriculture, and we've got amazing constraints in supply. In the 1960s, New Zealand had the same per capita income as Switzerland. Uh, top of the OECD, we, we, we plummeted with the restrictions on world trade in the 70s. And, um, but look at the, the rocketing return in New Zealand's terms of trade. Uh, New Zealand has the potential to go right back up there and, and be at the top of the OECD with this type of uh, terms of trade performance. But I'm always keen to try and get European people to invest there and obviously the more information I can get from an event like this um, gives me the ammunition to, to get European investors to, to get, get stuck in. The idea that came through quite strongly in the research of establishing some sort of seed fund, people who aren't quite willing yet to risk all their own money on their own account, they'd like, like to pool it with other people's money and so, so in so doing de-risk it by going to some sort of seed fund. There's a lot of interest in, in, in seed funds investing in New Zealand enterprises. A lot of the seed investment in New Zealand now is, is coming through the angel community. Um, Mark, I think at least 50 million has gone into angel investments in New Zealand. It's a very exciting and high growth uh, area and if you are uh, back there I'd encourage you to make contact with the angel communities 
they're incredibly interesting. There's an enormous amount going on. We have been an early stage fund manager for the last 12 years, so we've been going out at bleeding edge. So seed or angel phase, really investing in a smart guy or girl with a great idea, a hell of a lot of passion, and a big, uh, a big aim or a big objective. It's great to see some New Zealand companies, and Trade Me is one example, that have been just really you know, hatched in a, in a garage and have proven to be very successful business models, and I think New Zealand has done that on several occasions. Safe to say, in New Zealand right now, it's quite easy to get angel money. If you're a good, smart entrepreneur with a good business plan, you'll, you'll find money. There is money down there, but it's in that gap in between the 2 to $5 million check is virtually impossible to find. The real challenge that uh, I think a lot of New Zealand businesses face is they don't know what they don't know, and they think they're at the bleeding edge of, of what they're doing. Stick them on a plane up into this market, onto the US market, they're one of thousands. They don't know that, though. It's getting better, but that's where you know, expat talent or friends of New Zealand talent can really help. One of the big um, uh, projects that, you, that he is now working on um, is uh, the development of a group that we're currently calling the Leaders for New Zealand Group. It's a network that is devoted to the principles of helping to grow the New Zealand economy um, through connections, through investment, through uh, influence. Kia is providing that conduit, it's providing the, the links and the connections uh, with the key players who can take you to where the investment's needed. The Kia network allows us, I guess, to have contact straight away with people who are making things happen. It, it, it puts us in touch with Kiwis who have got feet on the ground back in New Zealand and all around the world. Networking is the way that business is done in the Northern Hemisphere and it's fundamental and critical that Kia is strengthened and grown and becomes a real asset to New Zealand.